Oh. Morning, 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 morning. And today we have the Sennheiser HD 800. And we're just going to be doing an all black custom job on these. So it's going to be a two parter. First, we are going to dismantle the headphones, have a look at how they're designed. Be quite interesting to see how they're built and the little design choices that they've made in there. And then probably the second part will be painted. So we'll prep them, paint them, clear coat them, give them some love, put them back together, see how sexy they look. Alrighty then. Uh, it's been a little while since I've pulled a pair of these apart, so you have to bear with me. There might be some stuff I've forgotten. So, as you may know, these were kind of Sennheiser's high-end premium headphone for quite a long time and they have some interesting technology so they have a ring driver in there so rather than being a flat diaphragm it's got a ring which apparently makes the wave front of the sound hit your ear more like it would if it was coming from speakers so you get really good sound staging and stuff from this you've also got the driver set quite far back from the ear which also helps create a wider sound stage they have gone on to release the, the the later versions like the 800s and stuff but this is this is the original version let's have a look so as with all of these things first thing we do is remove the pads and i cannot seem to oh, there we go how are they held on with clips let's just unclip those so i can see from these that these are used ones that we've got in for customizing. and see that the pads have flattened down over time, which will change the sound slightly. So it's probably worth replacing the pads every every few years. Uh, so inside there, we've just got this little uh, dust cover with the Sennheiser logo embossed on there. Let's get the other one off. That's that dust cover thing. Okay, now then, because these are dual entry headphones, they've got a socket in either side, it means that we don't have a headband cable to worry about. So we just have to remove these ear cups from the thingamabob, and yeah, I think that's gonna be the next thing to do. So we're, I'm gonna undo these screws in here. Oh, there we go. Right, I got this set from Maplins many years ago, and I, they're great, they're just really well made. Unfortunately, Maplins has died, and I, and I miss it deeply. It was, uh, for those of you that don't know, it was an electrical shop similar to sort of Radio Shack or something like that that was often in the town centres and it had probably a million different products that you didn't want, but there was always that one that they had. That one electronic piece or component that you couldn't seem to find locally. And uh, yeah, I suppose the internet kind of took over from that. Now you can order stuff and get it delivered next day. So there's some mighty long screws uh, holding the ear cup in which is really nice and you've got a metal plate behind there so it's a really nicely kind of built thing there because that is where headphones will often break is at the at the hinge piece and as this is only hinged on one side kind of cantilever it out there's a lot of force exerted on that so building out a big chunky metal things is a good idea so yes yeah, so we've got really nice long screws thick metal plate reinforcing the plastic. Let's get this off. Here we go. So you've got that, which is probably, it's pretty thick. Let's, uh, let's get the old doohickeys out. Yeah, this thing, what are we looking at here? So, sort of one point Eight mil thick, so that's pretty pretty thick. Bit of bit of steel there, with countersunk bits to get the screws to locate nicely. Yeah, nice, nice. Well, when they made these, they were really showing off, so they're going to put in all of their all of their best stuff. So it's got it's got a bit of weight to it, um, which is quite nice. So the headband's very very light. Most of the weight is in the ear cups, which is where you want it because it's going to help keep the driver from moving around too much. What should we do next? Should we save the money shot? Well, we'll save that for a minute, because obviously that's the exciting bit. We'll dismantle this headband. Now then, from what I remember, this pin, you have to knock the pin out and then that piece comes off. Yeah, it is, yeah, so you just push it from underneath. This pops out, you've got a little bit of plastic on there as well. And I remember there's another bit of plastic inside you don't want to lose. 
So that has released this, and now obviously because this is sprung, we need to watch out for some kind of spring in there. Don't know, so you've got another plastic, uh, like what am I thinking of here, bearing in there to help it move smoothly. And then this little section here which is screwed in, that black bit of plastic there, I think that's just giving additional support and rigidity to the structure. Apparently Sennheiser chose this plastic because it is, uh, it doesn't have many resonances. It is, uh, so this part is made from PAGF which is uh, polyamid with glass fibre reinforcement. So it should be pretty strong. But yeah, so the, this, this, that's the thing. So this this is all held together with big screws and stuff. But then you're relying on this this plastic part here. But you know, I haven't seen any of these broken, so it must be sufficiently strong. It does seem like they've they've added some gussets and stuff in there to su to support it. So yeah, it's a nice nice thing. So you got a spring there, and this is one thing that I noticed when I pulled these apart before, which I really like. Inside the spring, they've got a little bit of sponge in there. So it doesn't only damp that, but it will stop any kind of springy, ringy sounds being transferred to the to the ear cup, which is nice. Just uh, just that little that little bit of sponge. So there's a lot of love went into that. Um, cool. Right. All right. I'll just quickly rip off the other ear cup. So inside this side, we can see there is a. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a tiny, weeny little holographic serial number in there. Oh, it's not a serial number, but yeah, a little hologram logo sticker, and you'll find those hidden in Sennheiser headphones in various places if you know where to look. Long screws. Chunky monkey piece of metal. That's that. That's that. Pop that pin. Pop, pop, pop. Whoop. That's the arm, that's the spring. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the head pad. Just popped on. Okay, and then under here you can see you've got a nice spring and ball bearing detent there to make the clicks, which is nice. It'll last for many years and give a really nice reassuring click. Like you could pull that off the end and then your ball bearing is going to fly out and getting it back in is generally a, a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask this up because we're painting this section here and I want to leave this unpainted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide those back, mask this off, slide those up a little bit so they cover, so the masking tape goes underneath them. And uh, yeah, there's no use causing myself additional hassle removing that part. So I'm not going to. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's the headband. Now, this is it. It's the bit you've been waiting for. Let's look let's get a look at that there sexy driver. Suspect this is a T6 jobby. If you hold on, I need to refuel with additional coffee. It's early. Oh yeah, boy. Oh, I make a good cup of coffee. I'm gonna have to do a video on how to make coffee because it's vitally important if you want to do any kind of work like this. Uh, we'll go. Yes, I am. I'm going to do a coffee video. I know it's a bit off the wall, but um, I'm going to show you how we go all the way from a green bean to a delicious cup of coffee. Coffee engineering at its finest. Okay, so I'm just removing the T6 screws which hold in this retaining ring. I do have a set of HD800 drivers knocking around somewhere, which I was going to use for a project. So bust those out at some point because I have got a cool cool project for them. As far as tweaking, there are some mods that people do so they'll stick some damping material around this area and along here to stop reflections coming off this inside bit and back through and back through, which is supposed to make them sound subtly better. It's not something I've, I've officially we're not really supposed to mess around with the HD 800 We have a contract with Sennheiser's Pro Division and the HD800 on the consumer side and we're not really supposed to play with them. But um, we're not allowed to buy them direct from Sennheiser, which is a bit stupid. I don't think we're not allowed to do anything with them. All right, so I've just levered that up there. Right, so there we have another good solid bit of metal, the retaining ring. Let's see, is this the, do you reckon they've used the same metal on this as they have on the other one? Looks similar. That, no. 
that is 1.2 mil again stainless steel recessed screws you've got some damping material on the back here it's just to prevent any kind of rattling and this stuff on the back here is, is oh it's really high quality it's not like the normal foam tape you get that's uh i'm not sure what it is but it oh, it feels like it's gonna last a lot longer not break down like a like an expanded foam might do okay so now we're in here um what's, what's gonna be next that feels a little bit loose What's going to fall off this this bit? Okay, so you've got that bit there. Uh, when we repaint this, we might add the text back on the bottom there. Just uh, just to show off. It'd be interesting to show how we would get fine text like that back on in a different colour. Uh, then we've got this metal grill, which is already black, so I don't need to paint that, which is nice. And here's the actual driver itself. And the acoustic material that they use on the back here, this kind of mesh, it's beautiful stuff. I remember trying to replace it because for, for a project we had to replace this mesh in here and trying to match it is basically impossible. I think it's uh, Sennheiser's own secret secret mesh. What do I want to do? How's this going to come apart? Yeah, can I pop this bit out? Oh, there we go. That's, that's another piece that's come out. And in there I can see another bit of metal, so this is the other side of, the, remember those long screws that went through here and there's another piece of metal the other side that they screw into by the look of it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to take this this bit out next and then we can unsolder the driver. Um, there we go, that's freed that up. Okay, so that's the outer bit, I've got to paint that. And as I said in here we have another little metal plate which slots in there. Oh yeah, I can tell that's the same. That's 1.8 mil again. And in here you've got the, the socket, which is based on a Lemo 00 size socket. A little retaining clip that stops the socket from coming out. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to unsolder these wires from these connections, which are, I think these are part of the driver. I'm just going to warm up the soldering iron. Right. Release those. One. That's two. So as you've seen, even though these are consumer headphones, they come apart quite nicely. Um, very repairable. Just good, and you can tell just by the way they've done it that Sennheiser have designed these to last for years. You know, you see those headphones from the seventies that are still fine. This this will be it you know, 20, 30 years from now, these will still be still be good. So again, nice little socket there, Lemo socket, push push fit, um, all metal bodied. It's very nice. And again, you can buy replacements for those from, from Sennheiser. Let's get the actual driver out. Okay, so as you can see, the back of the driver pokes through this hole. Uh, I'm just gonna have to maneuver that out. It's got a rubber surround, which is holding it in. Okay, so here we have the actual ring driver, which is quite a sexy bit of kit. So all around it, you've got this rubber rubber membrane, which holds it in place. Again, it's gonna stop the driver from rattling the headphones too much. These can be purchased from Sennheiser, and you can also get the new HD25S and later models, and then fit them in the original ones. And it's not too much, I think it's about 380 for a pair of these, so just under 400 pounds if you wanted to upgrade from the HD800 to the HD800S, and then you could probably sell these old drivers for 100 quid or so. So there you go, so that's the actual HD800 driver. We've got those all apart, and uh, really nice, really nicely made, really nicely made. You know, I've pulled apart quite a few thousand pound plus headphones, and some of them you'd be quite surprised that they're a bit bit shoddy really inside. Uh, really nice drivers obviously and nice pads and stuff and it all works but it's just just the extra little bits and bobs here and there where you can see a lot of actual like engineering and love and going back to the drawing board and trying something else has happened. But yeah there's just um, yeah, there's just some interesting design features here. So on the driver on the back here I don't know if you can see you've got this curved profile uh, going into like a horn type profile in there. So that will smooth the airflow in and you haven't got 
like sharp edges too near the where the driver's drawing in the air which is uh, probably probably does something with airflow and then inside you can see the, the support for the center here You've got like this weird zigzaggy pattern and again I don't know why they've done that but you know they've clearly done it for a reason it'd be very interesting so if anyone can figure out or tell me why you think that these these supports in here are this shape as opposed to straight I'd be very interested on your theories because that is a it's a really interesting design and it's not I don't think it's to look pretty it might be just to look pretty I don't know it does definitely look prettier but you don't really notice it inside the ear cup um, yeah, I suppose you can see it in there it might just be for decoration but um, I don't know if you've got any theories on why that might be that shape let me know anyway uh, there we go I'll, uh, I'll wind this up now and then we'll do a video painting them my desk is now covered in a thousand pounds worth of expensive headphone parts uh, so we had a look at the HD100 driver which is a nice bit of kit uh, you can see why they were so proud of these it's a, it's a beautifully beautifully made thing and a lot of love has gone into it I like the airflow management in the back the the, the fact that it's a ring rather than a, the, the standard diaphragm there's a lot of st oh, a lot of theory went into this a lot of testing um, and there's just nice little things like the rubber surround that holds it in and things like that it's all beautifully put together and the whole thing the whole thing is really nice um, it's all designed to be repairable it's designed to last for years I can tell that by the way it's built you know they, they want these to last for 20 or 30 years which is unusual these days a lot of people want stuff to you know be replaced after a while so these have been designed to last for many years be serviceable user upgradable there's no off-the-shelf parts in these I see a lot of very expensive headphones with parts borrowed from other headphones and other headbands and stuff like that everything on this looks like it was made bespoke for these headphones and you can tell just by the way it goes together it's just just beautiful yeah so yeah so they're just just beautiful the way they're made the way they're constructed uh, the, the, the only thing that's not beautiful about them is maybe the looks because uh, you it's very distinctive there's a lot of the headphones out there where unless you really know what you're looking for they all look pretty much the same they're a round thing that goes over your ear whereas spot these from a distance you know that they're HD 100s there's no no quibbling there but uh, but they do look a little bit sci-fi which is why we're giving them like a piano black kind of look just to just to make them look a little bit more classy a high glass piano black I think will really set these off and make it look like a, a fine piece of furniture <laughs> rather than uh, than like you're off the set of Doctor Who so um, but that said if you are of the nerd persuasion and know lots of other nerds, if you get together lots of people to stick messages in this video and say that you would like to see a full-on kit-bashed 70s sci-fi spaceship look HD 800, I will do that. I would be quite interested in giving that a go, so sticking all the, all the tiny little details, maybe adding some little LEDs, making this look full-on Death Star rather you know go the other way because it's slightly sci-fi at the moment I think you know you can either go classier or you can go balls deep and make this an actual you know sci-fi prop so if you want to if you want to see that we could do that uh, but it would take quite a few people to say that they want to see that for me to do it because it'll cost a grand and take a take quite a long time but as you can tell I quite fancy doing that anyway <clears throat> it's been super fun hanging out and I will see you guys in the spray booth when we will be uh, spraying these black. And I'll go through some of the processes that you have to go to, through to ensure that the paint's going to stick properly because we're painting on a polyamide, which is uh, difficult to paint. So, yeah, yeah, if you fancy seeing that, subscribe. Or if you just want to see more expensive headphones torn to pieces, uh, I do quite a lot of that stuff. So, anyway, uh, give us a like, subscribe, hit the bell. I don't, I don't know. You know more than me. Anyway, um, super fun hanging out. See you again. What? what?